Peter 4.1. It says, If Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourself with the same mind, for he that suffereth in the flesh will cease from sin. There's a place for putting down your flesh, for not feeding the appetite of the flesh, for not letting the flesh voice that you've been trained by and I've been trained by have a voice anymore. I remember walking in to pray already, saying, Flesh, you're not in charge here. I don't care how you feel. We're seeking God and we're praying. I would say it out loud and slam my bedroom door because I didn't feel like doing nothing. And I would say, flesh, it, you're not in charge here anymore. You've lost authority. You follow the Spirit of God that's in me and you agree with the soul that I possess. I'd slam the door and say, we're seeking God. Father, I'm here and I worship you. And, ah! and on those days, I would have the most incredible encounters because it would have been so easy to just be a blob somewhere of flesh and just go whatever man well I just ain't feeling it dude you don't live by how you feel you live by what you believe and what you truly believe is what you manifest and pursue your life lived determines your faith your life lived you're judged by your works that's because your life lived is the expression of your heart belief. What you live is what you really believe. That's not a harsh statement. That's a sobering statement, but it's not harsh. It's just true. There won't be a lot of questions in the end. Did you believe this? Did you believe Your life will reveal what you believed. So we have to learn to live by faith. We have to learn to how to express that faith because if not, you, you believe Jesus is Lord but yet you believed all these other things that cause you to live as if he's not. So you got this counter thing going on. You see what I mean? And then it puts you in turmoil. And then it hinders your ability to what? Approach him. Because you got all this static and all this muddy stuff going on and you don't feel clean in your conscience and clear in your face to look up and say, thanks for loving me because you don't feel lovable. Or you feel like you're failing. Or you feel like you're not as good as you should be. Or you're not doing as much as you should. And you got yourself in this way scale now. Now you're identified through your life instead of his life. And you've lost sight of truth. Are you understanding this? Okay. Because I want to show you. Well, this is, this, this is, uh, this, this thing in, with Moses. I, I, I really hit hard earlier. And I, but I did want to wrap up and read this couple things. Because it's really powerful. By faith, he forsook Egypt. So do you see what he did? Because there was a real draw. Egypt, come on, he was living like a prince in Egypt, right? So, but I mean, is he's living like, he was a prince, so he has that lifestyle of a prince, right? So he's living like a prince. Watch. By faith he forsook that. Come on. In that day, he didn't have what we have to step into out of herself and into Christ. He's stepping out of a prince into bondage and slavery and the oppressed people of the Hebrew people. Come on! That is a different picture than we've got. <laughs> We're stepping out of the muck and mire and perversion of the world and self-centered, self-seeking lust and desire and we're coming out being sanctified, set in the kingdom of His love and His Spirit comes and fills us and He cuddles us and coos us and puts us to sleep and wakes us up and walks through the day with us. It really can't be that way, by the way. <laughs> he is forsaking the life of a prince to go with these guys that are in making bricks for Pharaoh. There's a lot of content. You know that's the land of bondage. It's type and shadow. A lot of analogies with Egypt. Like that, that, that actually represents sin. The bondage of sin. The land of Egypt. They're under, they're under the control of another. A taskmaster. They're in bondage to Pharaoh. Type and shadow of Satan. Trapped under sin. That's where the terms deliver muck and mire. Hog back to the mire. That's where it comes from. Because they were daily in the muck and mire. They were in that mud. Slopping and slopping in it, making bricks to build another's kingdom. You get it? That's what sin is. It's actions that build the kingdom of another that you weren't created to build. You created for the kingdom of God. Sin builds the kingdom of another. So it puts you under that bondage. So you're in the muck and mire. It's the muck and mire of sin. He saved me from that muck and mire of sin. I'm not treading in the mud anymore. And I'm not making bricks for Pharaoh so he can build his monuments. 
That's what the Hebrews were trapped doing and oppressed doing. They were laboring under the taskmastering of another building his kingdom when they're created as the children of God. You see the paradox? You see how wretched uh, 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 even the ignorance of a life of sin is. That's why you come of age. The gospel enlightens you. It's just good to hear good, clear, sound preaching because it puts conviction in you. Conviction means light. Okay? This is good. I want conviction. When I was younger, I didn't want conviction. I was mad I had it. So there you go through seasons in your life where the flesh is roaring and raging and you don't even want to hear truth. I had a man in a mall a little while back. I was talking to a young man in a mall, two young men.